and that's been going on for years. And the only way that turns around is through the family. What would you do now that you're out, now that you're, you know, considered, you know, you're, you're, you're past that part in your life. What would you do to change the U.S. prison system? Ooh, you would have to change everything about American largely cities right now. So uh, a, a, a truth that nobody wants to talk about or hear is the amount of black men in prison, which is freaking insane based on the population. Now, is it because they're persecuted or they're from bad environments or is it just a never-ending never cycle from the cities they live in because uh, we broke away from the black middle class, you know, uh, the, the atomic family? The nuclear family, not nuclear mm -hmm. family. Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, I think it's all of that. I think it's all of it. Uh, but I think what you, to, to fix the prison system, we need to fix our cities first. We need to fix our cities and society. We have a lot of, uh, uh, young men who don't, don't feel like they have any hope at all. So we, uh, and, uh, we have a lot of young men out there with no dads. So dads need to fucking stay at home. Uh, we need to stop uh, being soft on certain things. Uh, we uh, we this American cities run by Democrats largely have turned into wastelands quite quickly. Uh, we've seen these policies fail, and I don't, I don't care if you're a Democrat. I don't care if you're a Republican. I'm neither. Okay, I'm just telling you what I've seen. Over my 54 years, we have now seen these policies run in these major cities for decades fail, fail over, and they want they want them to fail. They'll give you some handout, but they want to. It's basically keeping you on the plantation. That's what it is. Uh, it's a hard truth, uh, and we need to fix it. And we it, like the government can't fix this problem. We need to fix this problem. We need to get back to the nuclear family. We need to get back to dad staying at home. It is societal. It's going to take a lot of time. I don't have all the answers, but we we are wasting generations of young men out there are being thrown to the meat grinder by their friends, uh, their own family, uh, you know, and they're, and they're making these decisions on their own as individuals because largely they feel like they don't have any hope. So we need to make them, it, you know, we need to change it. And I don't know how to change that. You know, it'll, I, I can almost, I can go in there and talk all fucking day in right. prison or in a meeting. Like, hey, I pulled myself out of this, but uh, unless they experience it, you know, it's it's really hard. It's 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 hard. There is another way. There is a better life out there. There absolutely is. But man, it's going to be hard to convince somebody who's never seen that example once in their life from a dad or a mom or a brother or anybody. You know, I don't have the answer for that. I wish I did. Well, it's almost like. And you see this now with social media, uh, pretty consistently, the the demasculization of men, of yep. young men, telling them that that's bad. You know that that uh, toxic masculinity. It's so bad. You should not be masculine. And then, and uh, the obviously the it seems like almost a a perfect formula for for uh, continued uh, slide down a very slippery slope of you know, you see an increased divorce rate. You see uh, you know. Uh, Parent, uh, young men without dads. You see young men being told that they are bad for being men. Um, and when you add that all up, it doesn't seem like a whole lot of positive is going to come from that. No, no. And now you have pop culture, culture, big tech, corporations telling entire quote unquote demographics of people that they're marginalized. Uh, so, so do that. And then, oh, you're disposable as a man. That, that that's, and that's been going on for years. And the only way that turns around is through the family, through the family. Government ain't going to fix it. Government will never fix it. It's a societal problem. And uh, there's whew, a lot of very deep and dark. Uh, and there's there's answers. Just people don't want to hear about that, about, you know, staying with the family, not getting a divorce, even though I'm a divorce person. Okay, I'm a person who's been through a divorce. Uh, thankfully, no kids were involved. It might have been different if kids were involved. But uh, there's a lot of societal norms that shouldn't be norms anymore, in my opinion, that would probably make it a little better. It's never going to be perfect. But again, we're wasting a lot of our male population uh, because the government sees them as disposable. Well, so your experience has obviously led to 
you know, I'm skipping over a lot of your of your life here as far as San Francisco and the comic book shop and all that. But I think it's important as part of the you know the conversation that your experience and you seeing these things has led to um, really your voice from you know on Nerd Rotic, right? And and the brand as a whole. Um, when you making content online, you said something like, I'm not Democrat, I'm not Republican, right? Nope. But when, when you make content that is critical of the of, of the pop culture world uh, that can be seen as, um, you know, uh, I, I just said a, a, an alternative voice to the mainstream narrative, right? You get called all sorts, you get called racist, homophobic, alt-right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's like, it's really important. I don't know if anybody's ever, I mean, you can say, well, you know, I'm not, but like when people say that to you, what is the general response to that? I mean, cause I, I think I, I know that you're none of those things. Right. Uh, but there's this, you see nerd rotic geeks and gamers pick anyone out in this, in this fear labeled these things when I know for a fact that they are not, um, what is your response to, to all that nonsense? I don't care. It, it, earlier on, uh, at first it was like, what? Because, you know, I said, the doctor is a man. It's a male character. And that became this controversial opinion. I'm like, how is that a controversial opinion? He's a dude. Um, and like, that is misogynist. And I turned into a, a phobe. Uh, and I'm like, no, that's, that's bullshit. So at first you're kind of taking it back, you know. Uh, but then I'm like, uh, you know. I just don't care. I've been through so much. I've been called so much. I've seen real racism. Uh, you know, the last time I was offended, the, deeply bothered by something a man said, it was my celly telling me how he killed his, the two people that he killed in detail. Right. That was the last time I was like truly deeply bothered by, by something someone said to me. Uh, you know, it, it's the for lack of a better term, the pussification of our society, uh, that, you know, there's so much demand that you have to use this language. Now you have to pr refer to me by these pro pronouns. Well, the person demanding that it's their problem. It's not yours. It's not mine. You don't have to change your language. You don't have to walk on eggshells. Screw that shit. We don't live that. That's not a real world. We live in that is the social media world. That's not a real world we live in and it's a deeply personal problem you know try to find it in your heart to feel sad for them that they are so insecure and so not okay with themselves that they need to demand that you refer to them a certain way because you know what any trans person who's completely comfortable in their skin doesn't give a shit. well any listen, gay person who doesn't uh, they don't give a crap if they're comfortable they don't give a crap right and and the, the most fascinating thing about that is is you what you said is 100% logical and reasonable, sure. but, but you will be labeled, you know, uh, yeah. transphobic, homophobic, whatever, because, because you said that, because once again, it goes back to my feelings, right? That there's so much, there's so much coddling that takes place. Yeah. And like, like people don't realize, I, I mean, they don't understand how unbelievably easy it is in the United States compared to other parts of the world. It's it's really shocking how in this uh, how head in the sand they are when it comes to other issues that are happening. Even not even in the world in in our society, like it, it's it's crazy that they got to worry about how you address them uh, in a third party nature. It's it's insane. Right, it's ridiculous. You know what? There's a if you're in Southern California, go go take a trip to Tijuana. You think America is such a bad place? It's really close. It's with 100 miles of LA, 60 miles of San Diego, or even less, 30 and 20, depending on where you are, uh, and right on the border. If you're in Imperial Beach, go over there, have a visit. See, see how, see how, see how uh, bad America is. Uh, and I know many of you out there in the chat. I'm sure you have Craig traveled. You know, and that's why you should travel. You get you get kind of an idea of, oh yeah, it's not so bad. It ain't perfect, but it, it's not so bad here it's not so bad right and uh you know part of part of being an adult part of being a man is being able to show restraint and not act out on every single thing we feel and have a little you know have a little temper tantrum you know uh and uh you know just kind of like 
just roll with the punches on some stuff. It's, it's like such basic stuff that we're losing. That's that's part of the degradation. That's that's a little concerning. Hey, if you enjoy that clip, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Would greatly appreciate that. So you can find more clips on the channel. And of course, come join us live Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Central Time for our live Side Scrollers podcast. We would love to see you there.